Okay, um, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm probably doing a presentation on every, everyone's least favorite <laughs> aspect of uh, library management, which is assessment. Um, I happen to love assessment. We'll see, we'll see how this goes. Um, but actually what I'm doing is specifically working on a program currently for this academic year on assessing in-house video development. That is internally library developed, specifically library developed uh, videos to support information, literacy, and reference. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of background before I get into the details. Um, obviously, we're developing in-house videos to support student learning. Uh, and enhance our information literacy program. We have been doing this prior to the pandemic. Uh, we started doing it. We actually were part of a SUNY, um, a SUNY task and de video development at one point. Uh, but during the pandemic, we had a big transformation, obviously, from strictly in-person IL classes to be able to support synchronous, asynchronous, and hybrid modalities for teaching. So we developed videos to help us with the faculty and student support. Um, based on request, and then eventually it evolved to based on requirements and requests through our online reference service, which we used heavily during the pandemic. Um, as we get, went through this whole process over the past five or so years, um, we had to make changes in our format of the videos. Our look and feel was modified because we changed content management systems. I know a lot of people use LibGuides. We don't use it here. We use a content management system. Uh, called OU Campus. We had changes in our physical library spaces over the years, so we had to update content for that reason. And of course, the migration from EDSCO EDS to Almo Prima. And as we were going through all of this, we're making changes kind of on the fly um, towards content focus rather, rather than navigation focus, meaning a lot of our videos had, oh, intro to Greenlee Library, which is our library at Farmingdale State College. Um, and had, you know, introduction to the website, et cetera. We stripped all that out and made extremely uh, content focused per video. And then from that, we created a series of videos. I'm gonna explain where that comes in. Uh, we also added standardization of format in terms of playlists and so forth, and also restructured our Greenly Library website, uh, video collection website, which I'll show you guys. Um, okay, just a little background on assessment. I'm sure everybody has to do assessment in some way, or shape, or form. At Farmingdale State College, it's heavily involved in, in um, assessment. Now, library is listed as a functional area. We fall under academic affairs. So basically, our library goals, and these are formal goals that are assessed on an annual basis, our goal that the library uh, assesses changes each year. But the library goal feeds into the division goal, feeds into the college goal. And this is all system, um, in a system that this process is handled under institutional uh, institutional affairs, and they actually manage the whole thing. But basically, for the, our purposes, for assessing the in-house video collection, falls under the college goal, Center of Excellence in Teaching and Applied Learning, Academic Affairs is our division. And basically, it falls under the category of effective use of information resources. So one of our library goals, of which we have five main goals, is enhancing the information literacy program to improve student success and develop research skills. And then for this academic year, one of our goals that we are, are researching is assessing the in-house library video collection. Uh, currently, our videos are hosted on our library research page. I'm going to show you that. Faculty can link them within their courses. Now we will be Brightspace. We also use them in person in our in-person IL classes. Now that we have pivoted back to the majority of our classes being taught in person, um, but we also give them to faculty to supp supplement assignments. And we also wound up using video clips or our videos in reference interactions online when we were working uh, remotely for COVID. So we actually do use some of them, particularly in areas of citation, to send to students, to show them, to give them um, online in classes and elsewhere, but even in general reference questions. Um, and the, the videos are targeted. We have to take a look. We were kind of doing this, um, I want to say catch as catch can, as based on requests, so faculty request something, multiple students are requesting the same thing. We were kind of like, doing it in, in reaction mode. So what we want to do is take this, formalize it, and now we're assessing it to see where we're at. 
you know, how we're doing, what we need, what we can get rid of, et cetera. Okay. Uh, and by and some courses are discipline or course specific based on faculty or department requests. All right, we're currently performing the assessment to refine the collection. And actually, our need analysis involves outreach to academic departments. That's what has always been traditional with us through our library liaison program. But we've also got requests from student support service areas for, for this kind of help. So that's going to be added to our outreach effective this uh, spring semester when we do our library liaison outreach memo. And I'll tell you that. Uh, they're going to be included. We're looking at our video collection in terms of the three R's for retention, remediation, and retirement. There are some that have been retired due to changes. I'll explain a little bit about that. Uh, changes, obviously, in physical spaces, change in our approach to development. We're retaining some because the faculty use it for each course every time it's taught each semester. And remediation is also uh, involves library tutorials as well, such as uh, MLA, new editions, et cetera. We're tracking the use of statistics from uh, September of this past fall, September 2022 20, uh, through May of 23. Now, this here is new for us, and this kind of goes in line with our, the previous presentation on large scale teaching. Um, we, we're in the process of identifying videos to be used in DEISJ designated courses. This goes to the SUNY Gen Ed requirement um, for information management. And one of the changes for us here is there'll be effective fall 23, a mandatory FYS 101 uh, course. And that probably at this point is going to be a three credit course. They are asking the library to be involved in this. We have 1,500 to 2,000 new students, freshmen each, each fall. That's a lot of students and a lot of classes. And the classes will not be 250 large sessions. They'll be smaller classes. So, of course, we're working on an approach on how to address this and get this library information management and, um, material out to all these students. So we're probably going to be using our Getting Started with Research series of in-house videos that we've developed. Okay, uh, how we're assessing it, we are looking at the organization and discovery through our OU campus. That's our content management system. We are totally using YouTube analytics to see usage statistics. We also get feedback from faculty and students, feedback through our library liaison program, and just looking at the current standards and course requests and requirements. Uh, I already mentioned MLA, for example, we just put out two new videos on MLA 9. Okay, at this point, um, I'd like you, if you don't mind, to participate, if you will, in a poll, and I'll show you what it looks like. It's just a brief three, three question poll. I'll see if it comes up here. And I will put it in the chat, the link for it. And it's basically some questions on your in-house video library creation. So let me get this. I'll put this in the chat. If anyone wouldn't mind doing it. And interestingly enough, from the first presentation, uh, we're not using that tool. This is actually a Qualtrics tool. So, which is what Farmingdale uses. So it is a little bit uh, slow in the response system. Um, I'll take a look here and see if anyone has responded. Unfortunately, it's not super quick, but basically what the, what the questions are, do you create in-house library videos for your patrons? Do you track video usage? And which videos are most popular with your patrons? So we kind of would like to see that if you don't mind. And this here. Wow, okay. So it looks like, and again, this is really a little bit slow in, in updating. Is that right? Research databases, okay. Research database, I broke out citation because that happens to be our most popular <laughs> here. Okay, so it looks like that. I can come back to that when, excuse me, I come back to that. Whoops, sorry about that. <clears throat> I can come back to that one that quick. That quick. Um, 
What I'd like to invite you to do, if you'd like to look at our library homepage, that's farmingdale.edu slash library, we'll bring you to this page here. We have six tiles on the page and the center bottom row tile is library help videos. Um, if you'd like to go through and take a look at this, I'm gonna explain what we're doing. Uh, this is our main page, Greenlee Library Research video page. We have Getting Started with Research, which is that series that we've developed. Um, my co-collaborator on this is Megan Marchese. She's not present today, but she's done a lot of work on organizing the structure of the videos, certainly the content and certainly development of the videos in a standardized format. So getting started with research, I wanted to mention because of this whole new requirement for us to teach FYS 101 in the fall. We do teach freshman experience classes. Currently under our organization, there are freshman experience classes, first year experience classes. Um, most are not required. We teach them based on request um, by faculty. But when this changes in the fall under the gen ed, under our gen ed requirements that they're making this mandatory, that's where we're thinking our plan anyway is to create this, use this series of getting started with research videos, package it, have it in a playlist, and then get involved with librarian support. What we have not figured out yet is the logistics of how we take seven librarians. We teach roughly between 50 and 60 IL classes per semester, more in the fall than in the spring, across all disciplines. But then to add in, I don't know how many that would be, depending on enrollment, that's kind of a lot for our seven full-time librarians who also have many other jobs, you know, everyone teaches, everyone does reference, everyone runs the department. So for that size staff, it's a little bit um, a little bit daunting, but we're going to figure it out. And as far as assigning librarians to this, but we are planning on packaging this up and and using this. Now we are very interested, of course, in getting the usage statistics after we do this. Um, our heaviest used videos are in citation and, bibli uh, and bibliographic resources. We have a series here for MLA. Our newest one published is um, MLA Citation, at ninth edition. We also have, that's in text. We also have just published the work cited for the ninth edition. This series of videos is repeated for the MLA. You can see how we structured this to hopefully that it makes sense to everyone, to our students. They seem to be able to find everything okay. So we're happy with that. We also have some, um, department specific videos. Um, we're in, a, well, in our analysis, we're looking at this to see number of hits, to see how often they're used, to see what's worthwhile. These are typically based on requests from the department. Um, so that's also under evaluation. The course specific videos, a lot of these were created uh, to support specific classes that pivoted online, that were either held online exclusively or pivoted online during COVID. Um, we're also taking a look at this and doing outreach to the various departments to see if they need remediation, retention, or if they can be retired. Okay, when I mentioned our YouTube series, this is the Getting Started with Library Resource Series. Um, this is all the intro level classes. Again, we stripped out all of the navigation elements, uh, meaning navigate to would click this, click that page to get to the library and focus on the content. Um, so this is most likely what we're going to be using, perhaps adding maybe one more in for our FYS um, students under the gen ed, under the student gen ed. Okay, so we'll look at analytics. We can see in YouTube analytics, we can see how many views. This was 8,000 and change views in the month of December, November, end of November to December, uh, just to see what our traffic is. Um, not on an individual basis. This is as a whole for our channel. This here is a specific video on annotated bibliographies. And the interesting thing about this is years ago, and maybe for anyone that's worked in the library field for a while, we used to get lots of requests for classes to teach annotated bibliographies how to do it. Um, and then it went away uh, as far as here uh, goes. And then in the past year or so, we've been getting more and more requests for some English faculty, FYS faculty, first year experience faculty, um, because they felt for whatever reason, which we really don't know the exact cause yet, maybe it's pandemic related, as students were coming in with less ability 
to understand the conceptual process of starting beginning research and creating a MLA formatted research paper. So they wanted to take a step in between. So that's relatively new and I wanted to see how that one is performing. So that's why I'm looking at this. So we only created it mm, maybe like a year ago and there was 394 hits or views. Uh, we can also use uh, YouTube Studio to take a look and see how people are finding our videos. Um, I really didn't care about this initially until I saw some of our numbers, and I'll show you that in a minute, that were quite high. I'm like, okay, who's looking at all this? Um, and how are they finding it? Well, if someone does a Google search or an internet search and they, and they click on videos, suggested videos, you'll see 57.6% is how people are finding this. We also, of course, obviously have a high percentage of students using it from our farmingdale.edu and then other methods of finding it. Okay, this is, uh, so when I was looking at the numbers, I'm like, okay, who's all looking at this? Well, I see that 13.7% was United States based and then it goes down from there. So we do have various, a lot of countries, different countries using various videos. I just wanted to get kind of an overall idea of who was looking at this, these things. Not that it's going to really change my assessment in terms of our internal use, because that's what I'm really focused on. Then API tape citation. I'm like, how in the world do we have 20,900 views? It's not that it's been published out there that long. Well, I looked and yes, the largest percentage is the United States and within the United States is New York. Within New York, a lot is Farmingdale, et cetera. But there's also throughout the state, uh, throughout New York State. And I actually did receive feedback from some other SUNYs that they had seen ours and were using our APA and MLA citation videos, which is very good. So that was nice. Um, and we got some positive feedback from that. So that's how I'm sort of getting a view on all these. It's certainly the number of views um, to look at this for our assessment. Uh, I just want to mention briefly the Library of Liaison Distribution. We're using this in a couple of weeks to send out our regular communication to academic departments. But we're also adding in student support departments this, this cycle because of those other areas that we'd like to get outreach um, to, like TRIO, C-STEP, um, all those kind of programs that they have student services and do, they, they've requested videos for them as well. So we are hoping to send that series of videos and then also if we need to do additional development. Okay, what I'm going to show you now is our tracker. This is our work in progress assessment tracker. I do everything, I'll go live with it. I do everything pretty much in spreadsheets. And the reason for that is it helps me think, I can change it on the fly, I can see what I'm doing. And I look at it to see what am I missing here? So my mantra is always know what you have. So we're taking a look at this, this is our goal, this is what we're assessing. We're assessing from September of 22 to May of 23. Here's our list of videos. Publication date I have here, just so I know how old it is. And then we'll look at the by number of views, all right, and the percent change. I have the percent change in here now because I wanted to see what happened over the course of this semester. We also have comments on remediate. So if we've determined to remediate or replace it, retire the video, get rid of it for whatever reason, who are we planning our outreach to, and any notes that we have or any feedback we're getting when we do outreach to certain areas and departments. This is the getting started with research. This is the series that we're planning on using for that FYS 101 in the fall. Um, if I look at the numbers from September to now, um, not extreme increase in numbers, but that's okay. You know, we're just starting this. We, we actually didn't know what our numbers were before we started looking at this. So we're looking at all of this and we go down, I see certain certain videos are being retired because they're outdated or our physical space is outdated or we change our approach to development, okay? I come down here, I'm looking MLA ninth edition is new. That was just published in November, so that's okay. And then I look here again, this is one of the reasons why I was looking at the analytics because 16,000 and change for MLA in text. Not surprising that in text is the highest because we do an, an annual um, information literacy assessment for English 101 classes. 
And our weakest area for all our students is in in-text citations. Um, while we do it with the English classes, English 101 and MLA, we also know that that is also the hardest hit or the largest hit area in APA citation as well. We see that these students just still struggle with it year to year on in-text citation. So it doesn't make, it doesn't surprise me that a large number of hits are in the area uh, for video viewers in-text citation. Uh, a couple of interesting things that I'm looking at is just looking at it month to month, all right, is I'll look at this one here, how to create an annotated bibliography. So this was based a year ago. It was based on requests from faculty who wanted to go back to that. And this, by the way, the response to that, the request for that is mixed. Some faculty don't think we need it at all, English faculty. Others totally requested it because they felt students just weren't able to make that leap, uh, freshman, incoming freshman I'm talking about. So I look here and over the course of the semester, we had a 383% increase. So, okay, that's worthwhile. They're using it. That's, that's a good thing. Um, and then I look here. And the funniest thing is with using Noodle Tool Citation Manager, we use Noodle Tools for, um, you know, like, like if we use RefWorks, et cetera, it's a citation and, and a reference and works cited generator that our students use. It's a little um, lengthy to teach a class in that. I used to teach individual work sessions um, on this tool, and then we kind of stopped doing it. And then now we have several new librarians who teach it, and they're like, you know, we could really use a video on this to help students, give students a reference for this. And then we looked at what, what kind of videos Noodle Tools had, students found it confusing, all this stuff. And so we wound up creating a brief one, and we did get a lot of usage since it's been published. So, okay, so we'll retain that. So my point with this is we need to know where we're at, what we have and where we're going. What is our usage that we're assessing? What new development do we need to do, if at all? Um, how are the citation videos performing, which they are performing well? And then do we need to remediate any course specific um, videos? The course specific videos, as I mentioned, were largely done during COVID, okay? And during that year, and honestly, the hits are not impressive since then, not really. Um, RAM is the exception, but that's taught every fall semester, and that is our research aligned mentorship program. That's a separate area. And what we're doing in our outreach is contacting area to see if they want us to retain, which they do, if they want us to remediate, which might be possible. So we know we have a handle on what kind of faculty resources, librarian resources we're going to need to do this. So that's what we're looking at. That's our assessment. Um, I do have a couple questions uh, if anyone's interested or anyone has any feedback. Um, I'll take it. My question for you are, is have you currently monitored video traffic? You know I'm using YouTube analytics and I'm using some uh, information from our internal content management system. Um, so if anybody would like to share what they're doing. And my other question is, not that I'm doing this right now, but has any library designed videos to meet the SUNY JEDM requirement for critical thinking or have you been asked to do that? Uh, I'm going to open the chat just to see if there's anything in here. Yeah, it looks like there's two questions. Okay. Um, at least that I saw immediately. I'll have to double check. But um, Holly asked, can you tell if usage is happening in a scheduled class? So you had mentioned that you can see like what region they're coming from, where they're coming from to view the video. Is there any way that you can tell if it's your patrons using it? Yeah, that would be through that would be through our OU campus, through our, mm -hmm. our analytics through that system. Yes, we can. We can tell on that. Now it's an interesting thing when I'm looking at this information because um that's the hard thing with YouTube analytics, because that's total, right? Total traffic of who's using it. Um, but yeah, for for a class, uh, we do tend to, when it's in-person class or even online, we'll we might play the video. So we might be hitting 30 students, but one one play of the video. But yes, if we're if we have a, a sign, it's easy to tell in Blackboard now with Brightspace, of course, to see who's using and how many people are using it. 
but yeah, we, we, we can generally tell, but that would be from not from so much. I wouldn't look to YouTube analytics for that. I'd look to our internal OU campus hmm. access. Mm -hmm. And I scrolled up a little bit. Anna was wondering how you promote these videos to faculty and students. Ah, well, that is what I'm talking about that we're doing now with our, um, with our, let me close that one out, with our communication to the, to the library liaison program. So each librarian is assigned certain academic departments. And we also have people that are in committee members for different student support areas. So what we're going to be doing is we send out a regular communication, but in the context of the communication in the text, we're going to be highlighting, for example, we have our new MLA version 9 video, so that'll be in there. Uh, so we highlight not just video collection, but we also highlight any new library services or spaces and or upcoming events, that kind of thing. So that's sent out to there. We also, of course, have our library social media, which interestingly enough, we get a lot of feedback from students on that, but not really faculty, right? So um, we can, if it's something really big, we can send it through a Farmingdale communication. So they have campus-wide notifications, we can send it through there. But de definitely direct library information is sent to the academic departments and now we'll be adding student support heads, the, the heads of those departments through this communication on what's new in the library including videos and we are running out of time but with just our last minute if you can respond to the last two questions mm -hmm. um are there course specific videos are your course specific videos longer than the 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 tech oh, videos right. the answer is yes yeah and it is because now it's interesting and we'll, are we going to be looking at that yeah, probably yes in our assessment Yes, they are. And they are because we get a request from a faculty. They want us to come into a nursing class. We're doing it. We record it or we create a video for them. And uh, based on their specifications, for example, using CINAHL, that kind of thing. And yes, they definitely are. So the tech tool ones are shorter. Try to keep it five minutes or under if mm -hmm. possible. But yes, the course ones could be the 25, 30 minutes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And do we allow for comments on the videos? We do. But here's the thing. I noticed when I was going through all this, there were comments on YouTube that we didn't, we don't respond to, right? So I'm like, okay, so this is on our to do, do list. We have to figure out we should be responding and we have not. So yes, someone from the library will be assigned to responding to the good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, if it's someone internally in a class, we'll respond right away. Right. And I apologize, Teresa, we didn't really get the chance to answer your questions very much, but I wanted to give people uh, at least a couple minutes break till the next presentation. No, that's fine. I was just curious mainly if anyone, uh, my main thing was, has anybody been tasked with critical thinking responsibilities in terms of video or IL? We're helping with it, but we're not specifically tasked with it yet, meaning here mm -hmm. at the library. Well, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right.